Okay, uh, so in this video, I'm just going to run through the top five kits in my stash, which I thought might be of interest. They've been, some of them have been in there some time. Uh, one of them's actually almost being built, uh, completed being built. So there we are, making some headway. Is a lot of aircraft, but there's one tank, and they're nearly all German. So first off is this one. Now, when it came out, I ordered it straight away. Uh, sort of wish I'd got the um, the camouflage masks because it, it came with pre-cut masking for all of this. But there we are. Um, this is really a kit that's on the same level as uh, a, a wingnut wings kit in a number of ways. Um, the way it's been kind of designed, developed, the application and the execution. The fact that it's all in the box, you know, it's just brilliant. You've got cartograph decals, you've got masks for the canopy, you've got four options. You've even got the um, a card laser cut cardboard uh, template to make sure the landing gear is correct. Photo etch, not excessive, just what you need. Um, fantastic instructions, as you can see, no messing about. Easy to see what's what. Um, even down to this as well, people tend to overlook this. These are all uh, decals on the sheet and they're all individual uh, dials. Just saves so much hassle and you just cannot paint stuff as, as well as that. Lots of options, so you can go spatted, semi-spatted, not spatted. Uh, you've got bombs, you've got uh, fuel tank, rigging diagram. Obviously heavily influenced by Wingnut Wings it looks like, as everyone is. Uh, wonderful engine so uh, what they've done is molded these in and then you put this section in so you've got one side and the um, cylinder heads molded in so all you've got is a very faint seam line rather than it being two halves which really always gets on my nose because you never clean it up well enough now you can see uh, the completed actual model there as well see how smooth and everything looks a fantastic kit from a, a wonderful company, I think they're a Greek company, and it's just, you know, they they, they deserve all the praise. Uh, they've now got a Comet out, um, ME163, and here's some of their older releases. So there we are, um, exquisitely moulded detail. I've had it for a few years now, it's one of those that, you know, I will build. I don't know when. I nearly built it this year, but I didn't. But one year I will. It's it's one of those that you know you, you when you want something that is just going to be no issue, no problem, and just be a wonderful kit. That's when it's time to build it. I actually ordered this direct, I believe. Um, very large right up there. Look, you don't often get things like that, do you? There we are. Gas patch, 148th Henschel HS123A1 early, and this is the Legion Condor boxing. So, next up, we'll get the empty box. Now, this is probably obvious why this is um, something that I was uh, in my top five, because it's a very sought-after kit. Uh, it took me a long time to get it, two years to get it at a reasonable price, which I did, which is £30. Um, it's currently uh, on the bench, just about to be uh, matte, matte coated down so that I can start the weathering. By the time you see this video, it may even be up, not sure, but it's very close to uh, being on the channel. Lovely kit, as I expected, I'm very happy to have it. Um, it's, it's not been re... Um, released since its original release, release in 2000. There is a two-seater and then there was the heavily armed version which has the cannons. That's really rare. I do have the two-seater option. Um, I don't really have any uh, desire to build that in the short term but I saw it so I got it. Um, this was a really nice build. I filmed all of it. You'll know more on the channel so uh, very happy with it and I'm sure a lot of you would echo what I'm saying that if you had this in your stash you'd be very um, happy and it would be a bit of a prized possession. 
So that's number two. This is in no order, by the way. This is just the top five. So we go one more aircraft, then we'll go the tank, and then we'll go the final one. This is almost in the same vein as the DO-335, just because it's it's gone now. You know, you either got it when it came out or it's gone. And I, Zuki Mora don't seem to be in the habit of uh, re-releasing stuff. Uh, again, year on eBay looking for one at a good price. I did get this again. I think it was under 40. I was happy with that. Um, I have got everything in here. I'm going to throw at this. And it's amazing when you got these kits. It is silly, really, when you get it all and you think, right, I'm going to build that. So you buy everything. And then um, <laughs> two years later, you look in the box, you can't remember what you bought. But here we are. Uh, so I've got some exhausts. I've got uh, some Eagle um, Editions decals. Now, are these... These are cartographs, so that's good. I've just used them on the um, DO-335, and they were brilliant. And I think the one I was going to do is that one green nine that's what i believe was the one i've chosen and i've also got the um just a photo etch set here that goes with the dragon kit which ironically or not ironically got re-released so that's what's in here so there we are any i'll just use some tarty up bits on the zuki mora and then use most of it on the um Ho uh, hobby 2000 kit as it is now but uh nice to have these extras and it's just one of those that it looks I've got to be honest this is like night and day when you compare it to the gas patch kit because this looks like an absolute nightmare um of a build but it makes for a very very nice model now what i noticed on here is that the um the decals look really poor but of course you know it's it's you could actually use them, but um, I will. have I opened it? That's, well, I'm not precious over it, even if I haven't. So as we can see, uh, they are presumably printed in Japan. That's always a bit, uh, decals coming out of Japan are always a bit tricky. I haven't seen anyone use them, but like I said, I'm going to have to use them on one of the, um, one of the kits uh, because I've only got the film for one instrument panel and I don't have much in the way of side consoles here I don't think no so there we go we'll uh, we'll get there one way or another I might be able to sort something else out as well but there you can see this is why I've gone for the um, aftermarket which unfortunately is not going to have any cockpit uh, detail but there we are um that is zuki mora so i've got a couple of kits actually i've got the um horton uh 229 is that i believe it's called um as well the kind of flying wing um so one day i'll have a go at one of these and the reason i say it looks like a nightmare is that it's it's all this look separate tail the whole engine I'm not sure you really need and all this they do this they give you everything um, so you get the cockpit fuel tanks full engine um, no real way to display it effectively but I suppose you could lift up those panels and then you've got all this here look you know you've got like the, the cow flap and the radiator and everything that you just enclose made up with separate bits just unbelievable but there you are uh you know certainly make for um an interesting build and a very impressive model come the end i'm sure there we are so that is zuki mora's ta125 h1 and a bit of a ropey box okay so then on to another kit that i only saw in Tamiya Model Magazine International on the back page all the time. Never managed to get. Sort of got a re-release. I managed to grab it. Not. I didn't really want the German one. I wanted the French one. But this is what I got. This is the French one with an extra sprue. So it's probably better. This is the German version of the Char B1 Bis French tank. Which is a, just a classic if you're into tanks. It's an absolute beast of a thing. 
Uh, so I've got the photo etched um, set there, which does seem to be specific to the German one. So it might have some extra bits in it, not sure. Uh, so what you can do here is uh, free French taken over by the, um, well, captured on the return to France. So that's April 1945. This is one on the Eastern Front. Just mad, isn't it? it captured in France, sent all the way to Russia and then conked out over there as well. Um, this is one of the ones on the Channel Island, much like the one that's at Bovington. And then this is another Channel Islands one as well, but with the camo treatment. On the other side, we've got a nice big write-up like Tammy liked to do. And I've done a review of this kit on the channel a, a year or so ago, so we won't go too far into it. Typical stuff, it's going to be an absolutely flawless kit. It's got brilliant tracks, all in a bag on their own, that sort of clip together, like that. And my memory is all you really need to do is sand in a, a, a slight raised pin on the top, which you can do when you've assembled the run. You've got a French figure, you've got a German figure. This is basically the German sprue. That's the French sprue. This is the German sprue. And that's that's what the extra is. It's just a bit of um, concrete armour, a German jack, uh, German figure, cupola, tools, tow cables, all the usual stuff. Um, Slight change to the uh, exhaust outlets. Looks like a couple of hatches there are slightly different. Oh, well, of course, for the cupola. And that's a um, an aerial mount as well. So that's it. If you take this away, it's the French original French kit. Um, again, one that I've nearly started building a number of times. It will happen. There you go. There's all the um, classic Tamiya at its best. When, it, when they really try, they get it right. You can see just that one little pin there on the, the flat face. So there we are. That is going to make for a very interesting model again one day. So that's right up in the top five, I think, for obvious reasons. And then we get to, which probably has to be number one. Just because it's probably the best, one of the best kits in existence. There it is, the Tamiya Supermarine Spitfire Mark 8, which I went for. Most people's probably going to go for the Mark 9 or the later Marks. Well, I went for the Mark 8 because that's the one I like. So there we are. Bit of an in-between kind of variant um, from the Mark 5 to the Mark 9. Uh, we've got all the things that you're likely to need. I didn't like to go over the top, but I've got a uh, Yahoo instrument panel, which is just fabulous. Could say it's cheating, but um, it isn't. Um, hollowed out exhausts, a little bit of raised detail. Um, obviously, we need some Sutton harnesses, so what well, a Sutton harness. So I've got that, um, and I also got a few other little bits and pieces that we'll get into. So this is one of like Tammy's um, premier kits. So you get things like this for displaying it and you get a few extra bits in there as well that they will have done um, as well as like this box here which will have probably oh, I don't know what it's got in it it'll have some something that is either deemed delicate or impressive one or the other um, got a nice little manual here as well telling you about all the different parts that the Mark 8 had and some nice shots of the interior of a uh, Mark 8. And it keeps going. Uh, we get nice big colour options. So they give you desertized. And that's just the main one that they're giving you there. The rest will be in the back of here. Which I believe they've got an Aussie one. Yeah. Well, I say Aussie. It's, 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 it's the, it is Aussie. Yeah. So there you are. Um, and then uh, one in Italy as well. It's a bit more standard. That will be, um, I guess, that will be grey green over grey. Oh, pointed wing tips. Not for me, thank you. I'm going to be going actually much more for um, an Aussie type, uh, but I'll probably print my own um, masks because I couldn't quite find the scheme I want. 
So this has full Merlin engine, one of the best representations of that in plastic uh, is the Tamiya 1. And you can display that on or off. Uh, I also believe you can leave the panels so they'll come off and on. It might, is it magnets? No, it's a, it's a slide. So you sort of slip it in like that. You go, you lock it in, slide it back and it should pop off. He says. I'm not sure if they are removable, but hopefully they are. Yes, there's a magnet. There you go. I thought it was a magnet. So there we are. And, you know, Tamiya is probably one of the only people I trust to make that tight enough for you to actually not notice it. Um, comes with a mask set as well. You have to cut that yourself, but that's no issue. Probably preferable in many cases. Uh, there's your little plaque. And if you want to do it uh, in flight, it's always a nice option to be able to have. And we've got a very nice seated pilot and a um, standing pilot. Bit of photo etch, as you can see, everything you're likely to need. And there we are. So that is the instructions. There's a few more extras hidden in here. Um, now, whether or not you need them or not, I basically had quite a large budget for this. Um, so I just went for it. I thought, why not? So I got quite a lot of Barracuda stuff. So we've got um, a side wall there. I'm almost certain that you don't need this, but I got it. Um, wheels. I do think you probably do need those uh, because the wheels in here are vinyl. Um, a door, because I'm going to have it open and that actually looks, well, very, very nice. I mean, we don't care what the back looks like. Uh, I mean, that's pretty good. We got a few little uh, bits to tart up the cockpit. So that's the upgrade part two. Just a few little extras that are missing apparently. Who knows? I mean, I guess Barracuda know. Um, and then uh, just because we don't get that in the kit, I've got these rocker covers for the engine that actually say Rolls Royce. Again, you know, do you need them? Probably not. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna show the engine to be honest. Uh, so in there we've got the stand. I'll just try and find you some key moments here. So you can zoom in um, and you can see the details. So there's the rivets. Fantastically done. Again, this section I worry about if it was anyone else, but it will just slip in there and you won't. It'll just look like a panel line. Wonderful stuff. Um, lots of builds of this kit being around. It is obviously absolutely stunning one of the best kits ever made um, a fantastic build I haven't seen any issues and if there are well I don't think they're much of a worry the two slipper tanks you got the large one and the slimmer one a couple of bombs we've got two of these we obviously got some repeating parts on there so there's the standing pilot and there's the seated pilot. Sort of details on the figures. Very well done. Uh, we have just a few parts there. We won't worry about the wingtips and stuff. Uh, here are the canopy. We've got a seam line running down the center of the canopy. Uh, that's easy enough to sort out if you know what you're doing, you just sand that seam off and then buff it back. And these are obviously very clear. Uh, let's tuck that in there somewhere nicely. Remember to put the Barracuda stuff back in where it fits. Again, you know, I may get to the point and look at some of this Barracuda stuff and think it's not as good as what's actually there, but uh, you know, it's nice to have it. There are the uh, rivets as well on the wing. I'm struggling to show a little bit. There we go. But yeah, I mean, this is just going to be a joy to build. Um, not sure when. I don't know. One day. 
<laughs> he says, when I want a massive project. Again, don't know what's in there, but I'll leave that as a little surprise. There you go. We can't know everything, can we? Um, so, yeah, I think that's a worthy way to finish off this video. Um, let me know if this was of interest. I would imagine it would be. Uh, it's always nice to see what, you know, your kind of top five are and what everyone um, everyone's different. Um, that's certainly mine. I think it probably changes now and again, but um, it's a worthy a worthy one to really finish it off with this. I have got a couple of these that I plan to build, so that would be interesting as we come through. And obviously I've got the Dornia uh, not too far off. Um, and I hope, now I've put them on a pedestal, they actually uh, live up to my expectations. I'm sure they will. So as always, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can do that by hitting the subscribe button. Let me know your comments down below. And if you want to support the channel, there's a couple ways to do that in the description box below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.